Good morning. Today we are certain to have times of uncertainty, and such will be present in every person's life, regardless of their relationship with Jesus Christ. Ecclesiastes 9 tells us that one event happens to everyone. It happens to the righteous and to the wicked alike. Job found out the hard way that walking perfectly with God was no guarantee against trouble. In fact, it made him a target for our enemy. And so if you are a Christian facing uncertain times in your life, you're in good company. We are all as fish caught in an evil net, snared in evil times when they fall suddenly upon us. This is from Ecclesiastes 9.12. The devil will also try to isolate you and make you feel alone, but these will only be more lies from the father of lies. The Bible tells us that the temptations we face are common to man, and that God will never leave us or forsake us, and that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. We can read a good bit about the uncertainty other God-fearing people faced in the Bible. David had already been anointed king, but the uncertainty he faced from Saul's trying to kill him caused him to flee into the land of the Philistines, Israel's enemy. And when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were facing a furnace in Daniel 3, they were unsure if God would save them, but they obeyed him anyway. Even the Apostle Paul shared uncertainties, by which we now take comfort in knowing that we are truly not alone in our struggles. In Philippians 2.23, Paul writes, So soon as I shall see how it will go with me, by which he indicates that he didn't know. In 1 Thessalonians 2, 17 and 18, he tells the Thessalonians how much he had tried to visit them, but Satan had hindered the attempts. And in Philemon 22, Paul instructs Philemon to prepare a lodging for him, trusting that by Philemon's prayers he would be able to come. Yet we know this didn't happen, and Paul remained a prisoner at Rome. God simply hadn't shown Paul all of the path his future journey would take. Remember that for now we only see in part, and we know in part, and Jesus promised his disciples that they would have tribulation in this world, but their peace would rest in him through his overcoming power. Part of this tribulation is the uncertainty which surrounds our lives, and James says well what our attitude should be about this. In James chapter 4, verses 13 through 16, we read, Go to now, ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. To say such things with sincerity reflects a life that's surrendered to God's will, even when it's unknown. It also reflects well the prayer of our Savior in Luke 22, 42, which says, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. God's relationship with us will be one in which we are growing into perfection, into Christ's likeness, after all. It is a process that takes a lifetime, for we cannot bear it all at, all at once. See John 16, 12 for more on this. But God's ways are infinitely higher than our own, and we place our trust in Him. And in 2 Corinthians 4, 8, we plainly see that we will be perplexed at times, but not in despair. And still later on in the same chapter, we are simply reminded to keep our focus upon the eternal things which we cannot see physically. For these temporary afflictions we now have will quickly pass away, and they will work for us an eternal weight of glory. Yet in this world, we won't always be rewarded or immediately understand what God is trying to accomplish through us. If we love our Lord Jesus, we'll do our best to follow his leading, no matter the cost or the apparent outcome. Jesus says that we should think about this in the same way that we see it listed in Luke 17, 10, which says, So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, We are unprofitable servants. We have done that which is our duty to do. Remember that we are laying up treasures in heaven, which cannot be taken from us. We should rejoice in the goodness the Lord has laid up for us. For where our treasure is, there will our heart be also. Remember to check out the description for the related scriptures, and all scripture is taken from the King James Bible. May God bless.